Major controversy erupted over the weekend with the release of Disney's Mulan after we learned a little bit from their credits sequences. Let's throw my tweet up there actually on the screen where Disney actually filmed part of this new live action Mulan in Xinjiang, in a province where they are imprisoning Uyghur Muslims in concentration cramps. In the credits section, they openly thank a public security agency of a town in Xinjiang, which is actually tasked, Crystal, with administering many of these camps. And at the time that they filmed this was actually the height of Uyghur imprisonment within Xinjiang at this time. And to top it all off, right, so not only do they openly thank this Xinjiang security agency, film near what is happening, that the lead star of this movie, I won't try and pronounce her name, um, actually made comments last summer on Chinese social media Weibo, where she said that she supports Hong Kong's police amid the Hong Kong police crackdown on the pro-democracy protesters there in the streets. Disney's executive at the time said, we try to be non-political. Po apolitical whenever <laughs> okay. it comes to this stuff. Yeah, good luck yeah. with that. Um, there's also reports that they ran the entire script by the Chinese Communist right. Party, make sure that they had their stamp of approval. Well, they need it. This is so their So that movie. it can be yeah. released into Chinese markets. Yeah. I mean, the the dollar is the bottom line here. It's I mean, so that's, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's exactly right. And it is disgusting. It's disgusting that they would openly, that they would feel so brazen to openly thank these agencies the that are administering the camps, that they would feel perfectly comfortable filming these locations where millions of people are in prison. I mean, we just spoke last week. We did an interview with a woman whose brother mm -hmm. is in prison in one of these camps. Women are forced or have been forcibly sterilized. This is a horrific situation. And for Disney to just go forward and seemingly not care is really outrageous. Well, the dollar talks, right? I mean, that's what this is all about. And this is, look, this is something I've been trying to highlight here, which is that our culture, our way of life is being censored by the Chinese Communist Party. Our major industries, Walt Disney, one of the most iconic American corporations of all time, Time, is self-censoring their scripts and outright kowtowing to the Chinese regime because they want to make money in China. And this is what's happening throughout. This isn't just Hollywood. This is the cultural part, which affects your and I's lives, how we think about our kids, how we think about how, what we're going to pass down. It's everything. This extends to a factories, to our economy, to so much more. This is just a perfect public representation. Matt Stoller said here on the show, in the 1990s, or in the 1980s, 1990s, we thought that we would export American democracy to China. Mm. What we ended up is importing Chinese autocracy here to the United States because of their exploitation of the capitalist system. And really what you can see here is that you, you look, there's boycott Mulan and all that other stuff trending. It's not going to work. I, I'm not, you know, we, we can't be stupid about this. It's still going to make hundreds of millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. A lot of people still have a lot of affinity for Disney. Only the government can step in and make sure that this type of behavior is just not, is just, is not allowed, basically. Well, we've exported a value system that would say basically the profit margin is the only thing that matters. Yeah, right. And so the Chinese Communist Party and other nefarious actors around the world, like they're able to exploit that. It's like, okay, the profit margin is the only thing that matters. Then overlook our human rights right. violations and by and large, like certainly large corporations in service of that dollar have been happy to do that. And oh, by the way, this isn't the only bad act of Disney that we wanted to cover here today. Once again, um, the dollar ruling all. There's a report in the Daily Beast that Disney out in An Anaheim is covering up their COVID cases. So you remember we covered here, they reopened Orlando. Well, now that they have the NBA bubble there, they're like very aggressively contact mm -hmm. tracing and testing everybody. And so that seems to be going pretty well. Over in Anaheim, though, they're not doing all of those things. And so they have not been transparent at all about how many other staff members have gotten sick with coronavirus. There's an instance where 11 out of 12 of this one team, horticulture team, yep. ended up being sick and no disclosure. No disclosure whatsoever, no contact tracing. Um, one of the sickened team members said that he was told to come back to work before he even got a negative test while he was still basically sick with coronavirus. So, um, and, and by the way, local officials, because of course there's a lot of tax dollars that come in through this yeah. theme park, um, they don't want to ask too many questions here at press either. Well, why not? Because guess what just happened this weekend, Crystal Labor Day weekend? Disney and Universal Studios both hit capacity um, uh, at their at their different parks Yikes. down there in Florida. So overall, I just want to, I mean, 
you watch Disney with all their social justice and the, you know, oh, Black Lives Matter support, and then they go out there and they outright are complicit with the Chinese Communist Party and with people who are throwing Muslims into concentration camps, and they want to be apolitical whenever it comes yeah, to Yeah, I mean, in fairness, Disney has a long history of highly problematic filmmaking, so. <laughs> That's right. All right. All right, well, I'm more rising for you after this.